Now, holidays, right? Holidays. Holidays means pretty trees and choir programs, hallelujah, and road trips and time off. And if you live down south, maybe going up north for some snow. And if you live up north, maybe come down south for some sunshine and presents and treats and, you know, gingerbread houses and gathering around the tree and caroling if you still do that. And for some of us, Forced time with toxic family and friends. And that's what I want to talk about. How do you handle the holidays without losing your mind when you have to hang out with toxic people? Well, so this morning I got a message from one of my dearest friends. And she asks me, she says, hey, so if I hypothetically found myself trying to mind read someone to anticipate what they will say or do so that I can maybe make myself into what they want to minimize conflict and criticism, am I safe to assume that I might be dealing with a narcissist? Or have I been conditioned by one to behave in that manner so that anyone around me, like I feel like if they might potentially give me trouble, I make myself smaller to avoid conflict. And then she tells me a little bit more. I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on here? She says, well, there's this toxic employee where I work and she cannot let me do my job. That's frustrating, right? This woman, she says, she has to constantly be suggesting that I do this or I do that, perfectly acceptable tasks without consideration that I'm already doing something else and that I will get to it because I do my job. She'll also walk right by and she'll just pass something that she could have done for herself while I'm doing something else with my hands full and then this is after I've already worked all night for 12 hours and it's time for me to go home and then she'll leave it for me to do later instead of getting it done herself. So this morning, my friend catches herself arguing with this toxic work colleague in her mind and then she stops and she realizes, does this person even need my acknowledgement? I mean, why am I spending so much brain space arguing with someone who probably isn't gonna change, isn't like my spouse or someone immediately in my family where I need to actually confront this situation and I'm, I'm just spending all this mental real estate on trying to make this person happy who clearly cannot be made happy. Well, I believe truly that this is how we get conditioned either by our upbringing in childhood or by adult relationships or teenage relationships to relate to certain people in life in a really unhealthy way. And there is no time like the holidays to bring out all the difficult and frustrating and toxic dynamics when everybody gets together and there's a ton of pressure and there's everybody's judging everyone else's gifts and who spent enough money and who brought the right food and all of these expectations. So I responded to her and I said, look, it, it's probably very safe to assume that you're dealing with a toxic, unhealthy person. If being around that person means that you are constantly second guessing yourself, wondering how you can measure your responses to everything in order to minimize conflict, walking on eggshells, whether that means that that other person is a narcissist or whether they have a cluster B personality disorder or whether they um, are borderline personality or bipolar or a sociopath, not that being bipolar and a sociopath are the same thing, I'm not saying that, but there are different types of personality challenges and some are someone who's clearly without conscience, like a narcissist, a psych psychopath, or a sociopath. And then there are other things where people have personality issues and challenges that can make them more difficult to understand or connect with and can make it more difficult for them to connect with others, but they are treatable, like um, bipolar or borderline or these kind of other things. So let's, let's not lump all of those in together, but my point to my friend was that if she is spending all this mental and emotional energy trying to figure out how to not tripwire anything with this colleague, it's entirely possible that she's dealing with someone who is toxic and unhealthy. Nobody knows what kind of toxic and unhealthy that would be from afar. Now, with a healthy, safe person, 
Here's the thing, you shouldn't have to second guess everything that you do and say and every interaction you have with the other person to just make sure it's not gonna be used to start a war or twisted and used against you because you're worried that the other person is gonna make up lies and then, you know, make it, make it into a thing. Like, you should be able to sit down and have dinner with friends without worrying that it's all going to come back and blow up in your face later, assuming that you are a moral person who isn't telling lies and who isn't the untrustworthy one yourself. So with, but you know, the holidays bring all these things up to the surface. So how do we deal with them? Well, you know, most of the time throughout the year in our friendships, we often choose who we're going to hang out with, right? Now, if you're choosing to hang out with people who make you feel that way, then maybe you need to get some new friends. But with family, oftentimes we feel like we don't have a choice of who we're going to hang out with. So, you know, I, I know I've, I've had one member in my extended family who whenever that person is around, the whole family walks on eggshells. They never know what that person's gonna say or do or what they're gonna twist it into later. Or they may say something really nice now and then later it's gonna come out and be like something completely different. You just never know what to expect. And so the whole family kind of collectively holds their breath when that person's around. Worried to death about any little tiny thing. And so you end up having very shallow, forced communication. Some people spend their entire marriages that way. Some people have spent their entire childhoods growing up like that. So with safe, secure, healthy, well-adjusted friends and family, self-censorship shouldn't really have to cross your mind. But you might be dealing with someone very toxic if your interaction with that person is consistently characterized by assessing whether or not you're triggering their wrath or if they're going to use it against you later. Now, that is assuming you're not the one doing anything wrong, you're not being distrustworthy, you're not being immoral, you're not being dishonest, and they actually have legitimate issues with you. But so the, the question is, can it be that easy to weed out the toxic people in our lives, mentally make a checklist of all the people I walk on eggshells around, and kaboom, now I know who's toxic and unhealthy. Well, it, it may not be that easy because there's two things. One, you could be feeling that way because those people are legitimately toxic and, un and, and, and unhealthy, or, you might be feeling that way about people because you've been conditioned by a number of primary relationships in your life that were very unhealthy to think that you have to treat everyone like that. So the question you have to ask yourself is, am I doubting myself and walking on eggshells because of how this person acts and has treated me in the past? or? Am I doubting myself and walking on eggshells because of my assumptions that how, how they will treat me based on how other people have treated me in the past? You have to ask yourself that question. Is it because you have conditioned yourself to think that they're going to do something wrong? Or is it because this person has actually given reason to believe that they will mistreat you from past history? So. We want to make sure that you ask yourself that question so that you avoid weeding out great people in your life based on unhealthy conditioning from the past. Now, the next question is, what on earth do you do about it? Once you ask that question, what do you do about it? Number one, you can refuse to interact with toxic people at all. You can just say, you know what? We are doing Friendsgiving. We are not going home for Christmas this year. If so-and-so is invited to the big dinner, we will eat elsewhere. You can set hard, firm boundaries and say, this is unacceptable. This is inappropriate. We will not interact. I will not interact. But that may not be an option for you. So if that's not an option for you, number two is to set appropriate limits and boundaries to minimize the impact that those people have on your health and your happiness. And by health, I mean not only your physical health, but also your spiritual and mental and emotional health. And how do you do that? Well, some of it may be expressing healthy boundaries, but most of that is in changing how you think. Now, I have a Bible verse for you on that. 
And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. It says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture rebellious thoughts and teach those thoughts to obey Christ. Now, this means that you are going to choose this holiday season to take back all the brain space that you have handed over to someone who isn't safe or trustworthy to reclaim the parts of your mind and your heart that belong only to God and stop having those arguments in your head with other people about stuff that hasn't even happened yet because then you are giving them power over you. You have to take those thoughts captive. That means you get to become a victorious thought warrior. I talk a lot about this in my blog post called Learning to Tell Yourself the Truth. And that's at sarahmcdougall.com slash truth. It's about putting your thoughts in, the big words is, in subjection. Making them do what God says and think what God thinks. Instead of focusing on the perceived or real expectations of other people that have nothing to do with being healthy. So that means, you know what? Maybe this is the Christmas where instead of breaking out the china for everyone, maybe this is the Christmas where you say, no, you know what? We're using paper plates this year. Maybe this is the Christmas where you say, no, you don't get to force my child to hug you and invade their personal space when you aren't respecting their boundaries. You get to ask them for a high five instead. Maybe this is the Christmas where you refuse to engage in any conversation that you know is going to go down a rabbit hole and ruin everybody's day. And you just say, you know what? I'd rather not participate in this. Let's talk about something else. And then if they don't comply, you get up and you just quietly and graciously leave the room. There's so many ways that you can set healthier boundaries and then Stop beating yourself up mentally about it. If you've done the right thing, if you have put your thoughts in captivity, said, nope, I'm going to think about this situation like God thinks about it, and I'm not going to obsess over it. I am not going to give that real estate in my mind over to somebody who doesn't care and isn't going to help me find health and happiness. Then you will have a happier holiday season. So you... It, it, really, what it boils down to is who you worship. Are you most concerned, one, about the opinions of others? Are you more concerned about your own opinion of yourself? Or are you completely satisfied with God's opinion of you so that you don't need to grasp onto the approval of anyone else? And if that's where you're at, then you can just let that stuff go. Just let it go. Let other people have their opinions. It doesn't have to take up space in your mind and then spill over to ruin the day in your heart. If you are only concerned about what pleases God, when I was a little girl, my mom used to say, you can do as you please if it pleases you to please Jesus. And that has stuck with me all my life. You can do as you please if it pleases you to please Jesus. When your heart and your mind are in alignment with the heart and the mind of Christ, it changes what we think is important. And that is such a beautiful thing of freedom. So focus on what pleases God. It keeps your conscience clear. Don't worship anyone else's opinion, including your own. And that is my opinion as your gifts for surviving the holidays and keeping your sanity this Christmas season. On a side note, the Bucket Brigade, which is an organization that I volunteer with, where we work with supporting victims of abuse in the faith community, has been given, the Bucket Brigade has been given a matching grant. So all the donations until now, from now until the end of the year, are worth twice as much. 
100% matching up to $10,000. So you can give tax deductible worth twice as much between now and the end of the year. Down, uh, now until December 31st. And I will put the link to that in one and in the description of this video if that is something that's interesting to you. And if it's something you'd love to do but you just can't, would you share it? Post it, share it, invite other friends to do that because every little bit goes a very long way into making more resources available for those who have experienced abuse in the faith community, inside the church, to support them and help them find healing and justice and wholeness again, like Jesus wants to give us. I hope you have a really, really wonderful week. And I can't wait to talk to you next time with, I don't know, something else about surviving the holidays. Tell me, I tell you what, drop me a comment. Tell me what you would like me to talk about for how to help you survive the holidays when it comes to family, friends, and all that stuff. I want to know what you think. See ya.